Hello, welcome back to Bald and Board Games. This is our how to series, and today we are going to teach you how to play Lawyer Up. I'm Bald. I'm Bored. Let's go. All right. So, Lawyer Up is a very fun and interesting courtroom drama type board game. There are three sections to the board game you have your witnesses here in the center. Across the game, there's probably about 12 different cases you can run. Mm -hmm. Each case comes with its own witnesses. The setup in game number one is art forgery. Yep. So witnesses are all tailored to that. The very top, we have our jurors. The jurors are set up as leaning left on the prosecution, which is the red side, leaning right, which is the defense on the blue side. And you'll have bias, which is each one of these little tiles. As you progress across the game, the bias will sway. And that is how one of the two sides, prosecution or defense, will actually be able to win the game and prove their defendant is free to go or uh, goes to jail. How did we determine who was biased towards what? So uh, for the base game, it's very random. You shuffle up all these little tiles. You deal the bottom card. All six go on one spot to the defense. On the top, they go one spot to the prosecution. Other games will vary, so pay attention to the rule book. Uh, <laughs> some of them, it actually there's locking in, which is on the back side of these cards for some of them. Oh, yeah. Others, you just get to assassinate and kill jurors because that's the Mafia style. Yeah, that's the, that's the Godfather expansion. They also have a Witch Trials expansion, too. They do. That was a lot of fun. And we have like five others we haven't even tested out yet. Yeah, from season two. Yeah, we're playing season one today for you. And then the final piece here on the bottom is our judge and where the actual questioning will take place. And Nick will kind of give us the overview yeah. on how we start that process. So we have the general setup of the board. The first thing that you're going to do to finish setup is determine your evidence. So there is a big deck of cards for every case. And those cards consist of very specific cards with symbols on them based on the, uh, what are we saying? The trial. the trial that you're playing. Those are the words. So we have over here, we are playing the spider's web. And so in the top right here are the two symbols. There is a little pencil or a paintbrush, and there's a spider's web. So that means we're going to be using all cards that have the case ID in general on it with no symbol. We're also going to be using any cards that have that spider web or have that paintbrush. Those are all going to be in this pile that we have here. And so the way that you get this pile set up is you're going to be dealing three cards to each player. Each player is going to look at those cards. They're going to choose one to keep for themselves. They're going to choose one to trash and the other to give to the other player. Perfect. <laughs> and you're going to continue that through this entire deck. And All right. So after you have the decks split up, so you can see here I have my deck, the buried deck, and Steve has his deck over here. These buried cards are only accessible if another card tells you specifically you can pull from that buried pile. So you also have, as the prosecutor and defense, a deck of standard cards that you play with in every single game of Lawyer Up. So you're going to be taking this and you're going to shuffle together with the cards that you just chose for yourself. After that, to start, we have to pull a witness. And the prosecution does pull first, but Steve, uh, the defense, is going to tell you how that works. Yep. So to start off the game, we have a bunch of different witnesses available. You'll see some have a little bit of a blue symbol. That means they lean towards the defense. Some have a red symbol. They lean to the prosecution. And some are gray, meaning they're neutral. And each of them have a called benefit. So if you look at the bottom of the card, it'll say called. It'll give you some information about what happens when you call the witness. So as soon as the witness comes onto the playing field to be interrogated, that called effect will take place. So for the purpose of this, we're going to bring in Joan Lace Elliott. Uh, she is a prosecution-based witness, and it says, called. You would draw one card, discard one card. And that is based on whoever called her. Just because it's leaning red doesn't mean I'm unable to call her as the defense. Once that happens, the players will go back and forth playing cards based on the symbols. So you see, these symbols actually match the bias of the jurors. So here we have a magnifying glass, we have a little like science-y brain, and we have a blue thumbs up. 
So since I played the witness, I would go first and I'd look and be like, oh, I have shipping manifest. That has a match on the sciency brain. It has a neutral three, which means I would be able to tick up my defense counter by three. And so because he called the witness and he positioned it in such a way where this P1 is facing me and because I'm the prosecution in red, I actually get to start off with one yes. on my score pad here. So the round will go back and forth as we play these cards down until both players either do not have cards left in their hand, which you have a starting hand of five, or a player is unable to play a card. So for example, if I had that card on the field and next up all I had left in my hand was this card, you can see the symbols do not match. I'm unable to play this card. I would have to say pass, and it would go back to the prosecution who can continue playing until they are sufficient with the amount of points they have. And so I, my first card I put down was this evidence card. And so the cards have effects on them from when they get put down. So this one that I put this down, for example, says examine. So any card that says examine means once you put it into your examination, which is this line, you take that effect immediately. So it tells me to gain the judge's favor, which is flipping over this judge card. And that judge card has a purpose. You need the judge's favor to be able to use your, uh, your procedure cards that we have here. Procedure cards have to be placed down in your turn. So this was in my hand to start. I can't just play this and use the effect. I have to put this down in one turn, and then on a turn afterwards, I can then play it. Procedures don't have to be placed down, though. Procedures can be placed in your examination. Their effect most likely won't help you, but what they do do is give you every single symbol to play off of. So sometimes it is a strategic move to put it here instead of there for its effect. We also have objections and sidebar tokens. Yep, and that's these four tokens here. The sidebar is the square one. All the sidebar does is say, hey, I have a procedure I want to play, let's say in my mind, I need the judge's favor to do so. I activate the sidebar, judge's favor flips back over, and I get a draw one card. This can only be used if it's available. The way you get the judges or the sorry, the sidebar back will be certain cards will allow you to do so. As well as if you lose the witness at the end of each witness, that player can refresh their sidebar. And then we have objections. So you get three objections for the entire game, and you can only object once for each witness. So if I object on this witness, then I would flip this over. And an objection can only be played if an argument was played down. So do you have any arguments in your hand? I do not. No. So if this card was an argument card, me objecting to that means Steve has to take that off and discard it, and then he would play another card. Now, because I use an objection on this witness, I can no longer use these two for this witness. I would have to wait until another one to use the next. Those objection tokens do not come back unless a card specifically tells you to flip it back over. Yep. So you would process, go through the witness, and as I go back and forth as you have different cards available. You would then, as you're progressing through the witness, count up your points that favor neutral or your own side. And at the end, you would determine who has the most points. So for this, I have eight points available as the defense. And I have 12. So what would happen is my eight goes to zero. His 12 would be decreased by eight down to four. And that allows him not only to claim victory on this witness, and there is a victory condition on the bottom of the witness card, this witness card says refresh your sidebar and gain the judge's favor. So I have my sidebar, so that doesn't do anything for me, but I get to take this judge's favor back. And then at the end of all of that, you pile up your cards. These get put into your discard pile. And the winner of that witness who has bias points would then shift and look at the jury board and decide to move the bias. As you can see here, we have sixes, fives, all the way down to one. That is the influence points that you need. So if you have four influence points, he's unable to move the five or the sixes. He can move one, four, a three and a one, two and two, and so on. 
You don't have to spend all of them, but they automatically go back to zero at the end of each witness. Yeah, you, I mean, it works in your benefit and you should spend all of them if you can. So I'm going to try and maximize my influence here. So I'm the prosecution, the red. So by the end of the game, I want to have as many of these biases in the red section. And what that symbolizes is that the jury is leaning towards me as the prosecution and stating that I won the case. So let's see here. So I'm going to do a one to get that to the red. I'm going to do this two to get me to the red. That's three. I think I'm going to move another one to push that even deeper down in there. And so as you saw, every time I spend this influence, it moves over one tick and it costs that numbered amount, as Steve just said. So now for this guy here, it's going to cost Steve two to get it back to his side. So strategically using your influence to try and position it in a way that's going to be most difficult for the other player to push it back is a key part of this game. Yep. And then so for the end game scoring, it's very simple. For this case specifically, if you have seven or more witnesses that are leaning onto your side of the juror card, you win the, that whole trial. Mm -hmm. If you only have six and you're tied with the opposing player, whoever has judge's favor would actually win. So that is a thing to keep in mind at the end. You might need judge's favor. Uh, but again, this is only the scoring for this style of game. Lawyer Up has others, as we mentioned, Godfather Witch Trials, and the rule books change a little bit as you go through those as well. And season two gets even more intense with celebrity divorce and some other things which bring in new mechanics in regards to trying to, oh my goodness, <laughs> in regards to trying to claim the turd that was in the bed or the kids, whichever you prefer. Uh, so it's a very fun game. It, it plays quickly each round, and uh, the strategy behind it is addicting, really. Yeah. And then the last thing I mentioned is you do have this little defense reference card and a prosecution reference card. So as you're playing, if you forget, hey, what can I do to object, or how do I sway jurors? That card's always there for you. A lot of games have these player aids, so you can just pay attention to that as you're playing throughout. I think that's it. Yeah, so after you watch this video, please check out our next YouTube, which will be our gameplay of Lawyer yes. Up. We'll probably get two or three games in uh, and see who reigns supreme. Yeah, I, don't, I think the games have been pretty even across the board each time we've played. Uh, so hopefully, if you have this, haven't played it yet, you finally dig in. If you were confused on the rules, hopefully we helped alleviate that confusion. And if you don't have it, definitely go out and get this. Like I said, Season 2 just came out not too long ago. You can get both seasons. It is worth the buy. It is so fun. A uh, great gift for any of your lawyer friends. <laughs> or if well. you have a friend that just loves watching Law & Order SVU. Here you go. That's, that's, that's this one. Yeah, I have multiple friends who are like, yeah. hey, you just watch SVU in bed all day. Be like, you can get out of bed and play a board game now. All right, well, <laughs> that was a How To by Bald and Board Games. I'm bald. I'm bored. Thanks for watching.